We live in a world that runs on data. It's how Amazon and Netflix know which movies and products to recommend, how Starbucks manages a global supply chain, and how Uber connects drivers with passengers in real time. But the thing is, data skills aren't just for tech companies or professional analysts anymore. Everyone works with data to some degree, and everyone can benefit from data literacy skills. In this video, we're covering an important topic that will help you take your data literacy to the next level. All right, so accessing data is one thing, but organizing and storing it is a completely different beast. So at a high level, some of the most common storage modes that you're likely to encounter include flat files, databases, data warehouses, and data lakes. Now, there are other less common storage methods and hybrid variations of these as well, but our goal here is really just to paint some broad strokes and help you understand the key similarities and differences between them. Now, the simplest method of data storage is a flat file, which is typically a static tabular data extract saved either to a local drive or cloud storage like Google Drive or OneDrive. And this is very common for one-off projects or quick ad hoc analyses that don't require multiple data sources, ongoing maintenance, or complex data models. The most common types of flat files you'll see are CSVs and Excel workbooks. Now, a database is a collection of related tables stored in a database management system, or DBMS. Databases are typically used for recording and collecting data tied to a single application or business process, like capturing transactional records or real-time website activity. And they're usually optimized for online transactional processing, known as OLTP, meaning that they're built to receive and store data as efficiently as possible but aren't really ideal for querying or analysis. Common database options include MySQL, Amazon RDS, Microsoft Access or SQL Server, and many, many more. A data warehouse, on the other hand, is a database or a collection of data sourced from multiple databases that's typically structured to support specific analytics needs and is optimized for online analytical processing, or OLAP. That basically just means it's built in a way that makes it very easy and very fast for users to access the data they need for analytical purposes. Examples of data warehouse tools include Amazon Redshift, Google BigQuery, Snowflake, Teradata, and others. And finally, we have data lakes, which are essentially a repository of both structured and unstructured data sources, often stored in their raw, unprocessed state. So we're talking about everything from CSV files to MP4s, PDFs, text documents, and so on. Instead of getting cleaned and prepped on the way in, data is typically extracted from the lake and transformed for specific purposes, often relating to machine learning or AI. Some examples of data lakes include Amazon S3, Azure Data Lake, Google Cloud, and more. Now, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed about what this all means, no need to worry. I've worked in data analytics and business intelligence for over 15 years, and I still get confused by this stuff. The good news is that unless you plan to become a data engineer, it's extremely unlikely that you would be the one building or configuring databases or warehouses. In fact, in most cases, data engineers or architects are the ones primarily responsible for standing up these systems and building the pipelines and automations that help the data flow from one place to another. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, we've got a brand new Data Literacy Foundations course, and it's entirely free. You can check it out at mavenanalytics.io. So whether you're an individual looking to build confidence, a leader seeking to empower and upskill your team, or a data professional just trying to stay ahead of the curve, this is the course for you. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in.